Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Josh and what I like to talk about is all things relating to devotional non-duality, non-duality, and really the pathway of Jnana Yoga, which is the pathway to the self with a capital S through self-knowledge. And according to Dr. David Hawkins' Map of Consciousness, Jnana Yoga calibrates at 975 and the pathway of devotional non-duality calibrates at 985. So I like to sort of keep my spiritual talks and the information I share sort of in the higher levels. Um, I do wanna talk about some things that people struggle with eventually too, but the, the primary path of spirituality that I've always followed in my own life has really been that of Jnana Yoga, devotional non-duality, and then I've always been kind of a fan of Zen so Zen, I believe, calibrates at about 890 on uh, Dr. David Hawkins' Map of Consciousness. So speaking of Zen, what I really wanted to talk about today was this little book called The Zen Teaching of Huang Po. So I don't know if anybody here is familiar with this. This is the little pocket version, which I think is super cool. Kind of hard to find. Uh, but it fits perfectly in your pocket and you could bring it with you to work. And I, I, I personally like books better than, you know, stuff on your Kindle. I know a lot of people just carry around a Kindle nowadays or you could like have Kindle on your phone, which is handy, I guess, you know. But there's just something cool about carrying around the energy of an actual book. So there's a cool story behind this book that I want to share first before I kind of go into what it's about. And... I was at a Dr. David Hawkins lecture in about 2009 in Prescott, Arizona. And Doc was a big avid fan of the Zen teaching of Huang Po, which by the way, uh, this teaching calibrates at 850. And I believe Dr. Hawkins said that later on, uh, Huang Po transcended the void at calibration 850 and went on to realize that the ultimate reality is allness instead of nothingness. So his calibration jumped up to like 960 later on in his life. But this book calibrates at 850. Anyways, I was, I was at a Dr. Hawkins lecture one time and I brought this book up to get signed. There was like a line on the left side of the room for people wanting their books signed and then on the right side of the room there were people that had questions. So I happened to throw this in the pile of books that I wanted to get signed by him. And when it made it up to his table he stopped the whole question and answer session and turned and looked at the audience and was like whose book is this and he kept asking kind of adamantly whose book is this whose book is this and susan hawkins saw me and she's like oh it's josh's and he was like they tried to get me he tried to get me to come up on stage because he wanted to see me and i'm not sure why but he was so adamant about finding out whose book this was this was so Kind of a cool story. I don't, you know, I don't know what perked him so much when he saw this book. Uh, I know he's, you know, obviously a big fan of this teaching, uh, but it was just kind of a cool experience. And then uh, there's his little signature, his little autograph in there that I got him to sign this. So it's a cool book to carry around. And he said, I think he said even at that lecture that, you know, if you carry this in your jacket pocket, that's all you really ever need. Uh, you're definitely going to a good place. So anyways, yeah, I wanted to talk about the Zen teaching of Wang Po. So those that are not familiar with his teaching, the whole gist of his teaching is to let go of all conceptual thought. And when you let go of all conceptual thought, you discover the infinite silent state, which is, which is the Buddha nature. So this is one of my favorite teachings, you know, on my spiritual path. I've, like I said, I've got, I got into Dr. Hawkins in about 2004 and then I started studying Huang Po pretty intensely. When was that? Probably around 2007-ish. I found his book and, you know, really practiced that technique of letting go of all, all conceptual thought. And Dr. David Hawkins shows, shares his own story about, you know, getting to a place where he lets go of, doesn't allow a single thought to arise for about 11 days straight. And then whatever state he was into, the state intensified right in the middle of Rothman's restaurant in Long Island. So you can tell that Doc really practiced this technique of letting go of all conceptual thought. And Doc also mentions in his program called Healing Through a Course in Miracles 
that one of the ways to let go of mind with a small m, mind with a small m is the same thing as thinkingness, mind with a capital M, which is mentioned a lot in this book, is synonymous with no mind or infinite silence or pure consciousness. So whenever you see mind with a capital M, it's pretty much representing no mind or consciousness itself. And then mind with a lowercase m is ego or thinkingness. So I just wanted to clarify that, but yeah, Doc talks about one of the ways to silence thinkingness is with the Sedona method. So I've practiced the Sedona method for years now, and I think it is a fantastic technique to help silence one's thinkingness. You know, you, you're constantly letting go, wanting to change things, control things. Whatever feeling arises, you're saying yes to it. And when you wipe out these feelings, each feeling has associated with it like 50,000 or so thoughts. So when you wipe out a feeling, 50,000 thoughts that were associated with that one feeling dissolve all by themselves. So it's a great technique to silence thinkingness. And I think the Sedona method, or you know, if you've been reading all of Dr. Hawkins' books, his book called Letting Go, the technique that he shares in there and the Zen teaching of Wang Po really like coincide perfectly with each other. You know, it's a great technique to practice, and it's kind of what I want to kind of help coach for people that are interested, teaching people how to let go and apply letting go to silence their endless thinkingness. Because when thinkingness falls away, we begin to experience ourselves with a capital S to greater and greater degrees. So anyways, this whole Zen teaching of Wang Po, the, the real crux of the whole book is based on, you know, letting go of all conceptual thinking. And you know, conceptual thought is really like making distinctions amongst all things, you know, it's kind of like, you know, either orness, you know, you self and other. Um, I mean, everything really kind of boils down to conceptual thought, you know, and the ego identified state, like I've, I've sh I think I've shared in other videos, you know, the way this world works, unfortunately, is everything has to have a definition, you know, this is a wall, this is a body, this is Josh, there's a bed, there's a tree, there's a cloud, you know, we give definition to everything and we have to put a label or a name on everything for convenience purposes. But when you go into a higher state of consciousness, all those definitions disappear and you realize that everything is the same substance. Everything is the Buddha nature. Everything is the supreme reality. I had that experience once pretty intensely. I was playing with Nisargadatta, Nisargadatta Maharaja's teaching of ju to just be just be, don't do anything else. And as often as I could, I would just be with my surroundings. And I was in Sedona in the back of a Thai restaurant, standing outside smoking a cigarette. And all of a sudden, just by being, it was like all the definition of form disappeared and I was very aware that everything was just the supreme reality. It's like here you are searching for the self of the capital S or the supreme reality and when that dualistic thinking or conceptual thought falls away, you realize that everything all along was the supreme reality. So that was a pretty cool experience. But yeah, so this whole teaching is letting go of all conceptual thinking. And this are, and Wang Po pretty much says that, you know, to rid yourself of conceptual thought is the way with a capital with a capital W. And just to share like a couple quotes out of this book, why I love it so much, is he talks about, let's see here. So I, I just highlighted a couple little point the uh, passages in this book that I really wanted to point out. And he talks about, so as soon as the mouth is opened, evil spring forth. People either neglect the root and speak of the branches or neglect the reality of the illusory world and speak only of enlightenment. Or else they chatter of cosmic activities leading to transformations while neglecting the substance from which they spring. Indeed, there is never any profit in discussion. So he's just a very direct and to the point sort of Zen teacher. And this, this next passage that I wanna share really just sums up his teaching all in all. But he says, when a sudden flash of thought occurs in your mind and you could recognize it for a dream or an illusion, then you can enter into the state reached by the Buddhas of the past. Not that the Buddhas of the past really exist or that the Buddhas of the future have not yet come into existence, 
Above all, have no longing to become a future Buddha. Your sole concern should be as thought succeeds thought to avoid clinging to any of them. Nor may you entertain the least ambition to be a Buddha here and now. Even if a Buddha arises, do not think of him as enlightened or deluded, good or evil. Hasten to rid yourself of any desire to cling to him. Cut him off in the twinkling of an eye. On no account seek to hold him fast, for a thousand locks could not stay him, nor a hundred thousand feet of rope bind him. This being so, valiantly strive to vanish and annihilate him. So then he goes on to say, I will now make luminously clear how to set about being rid of the Buddha. Consider the sunlight. You may say it is near, yet if you follow it from world to world, you will never catch it in your hands. Then you may describe it as far away, and lo, you will see it is just before your eyes. Follow it, and behold, it escapes you. Run from it, and it follows you close. So this is just kind of a cool little excerpt, him talking about what the main practice is, to avoid clinging to thinkingness of any sort whatsoever. You know, and then Dr. Hawkins' primary teaching was really to realize the infinite silent space that's just below your thoughts. So, Dr. Hawkins recommended shifting your mental gaze from the realm of thinkingness, if like thinkingness is, was on like the horizon of your mind, if you shift your mental gaze below that, you'll see there's this infinite invisible space underneath the mind with a, with a small m. And the state of no mind is happening at all times. Right this moment, like as I'm talking, there's also going on a state of no thinkingness that's underneath this thinkingness. If it wasn't for that no mind space that's, that's present as I'm, as I'm talking, there would be no awareness of the words being said right now. So Dr. Hawkins recommended shifting the focus mental gaze of attention to below the thoughts and realize the infinite silent space which I find to be a great technique. So in my own personal spiritual practice, I sort of go back and forth between utilizing the Sedona method, releasing slash surrendering all these feelings as they arise. And I, f I feel like the more that I surrender these feelings, concepts, beliefs, programs, that you become increasingly more aware that, that your innate nature is this infinite silent emptiness in which there is no personal self in that space. And the more that I surrender and let go, the more this sort of attention is sort of attracted to that space. So it's like in the ordinary state of consciousness, you're, you're sort of just like walking around completely lost in form at all times. You know, you're looking at the trees, you're looking at the people, you're looking at the cars driving by. Your, your attention's constantly on content. And if it's not on content out in the world, then it's on some story that you're creating. As you progressively let go of the stories within your own consciousness and you progressively keep surrendering all these feelings, you begin to intuit that there's just this infinite silent space in which no entity exists. It's just this infinite formless space and there's nobody there. So to use the Sedona method in combination with the Zen teaching of Huang Po is a great teaching and I feel like it's just a it's a very pure pathway and combining that with what Dr. Hawkins has told us about the infinite silence you know all three of these things just really work hand in hand and you know Doc has a, a quote out of his orange book reality spirituality and modern man where he talks about the realm of silence and he says by contemplation and meditation the silent formless state is discovered to be the primordial substrate beyond even the duality of existence versus non-existence. It is the Buddha state, which like space is unsullied by transitory content. The pure formless silence is the ultimate context and beyond all names, although historically sometimes refer referred to as the Buddha nature. Even though devoid of form, the ultimate state is all inclusive as allness in contrast to the nothingness of the void at calibration 850. So this just confirms that the ultimate state is this infinite silence, which we call mind with a capital M. We could also call it no mind. We could call it pure consciousness. We could call it pure awareness. We could call it the self with a capital S. And to use the Sedona method to remove the obstacles to this space, to also study the Zen teaching of Huang Po and then 
you know, keep reading Dr. Hawkins teachings, I feel like really allows us to intuit this infinite silent space. So I'm trying to think if there's any points I want to make about it other than what I've said. The other thing I guess I'll mention is, um, in Dr. David Hawkins, 2007 December lecture called or titled the mystic. He talks a lot about this infinite silent state and he says that you can pray and ask God to remove your condition from the realm of thinkingness to the infinite silence that's below it. So that's a great prayer that I've been using most of my life. And, you know, he, he sort of mentions that, you know, you could read all these hundreds and thousands of books of spirituality and God and Jesus and the church and all this kind of stuff. And in that infinite silence, it all becomes irrelevant. And that all we're truly searching for is this space within ourself. And as we keep removing the obstacles by surrender and letting go, we become increasingly aware of this space. And that is the absolute truth that we're searching for. And in that space, nothing is happening. That's what he used to tell me all the time when I'd go up and ask Dr. Hawkins questions is that, you know, from the standpoint of the absolute, nothing's happening, nothing's being said, no events are unfolding. And ever since he told me that in the infinite space, there's nothing happening, I've been like, just so, I've spent all my time like, you know, searching for what that, you know, what that means in truth. So anyways, I feel like these, these three, you know, combining Dr. Hawkins teachings with the Zen teaching of Huang Po and the Sedona method is a great way to progressively discover this infinite silent state. And then, uh, I'll share one more spiritual experience that I had while using the, the Zen teaching of Huang Po that I don't think I mentioned, but one time I was playing with the Zen teaching of Huang Po and for about four hours, I didn't allow a single thought to arise within my consciousness. And I was going to bed that night and as I went to bed, there was like some dark energy that was not happy with the practice that I was playing with. And it was just sort of like confirmation that that which I was doing was actually working. And I remember sort of having like a psychic attack that night as I was drifting off to sleep in this hypnagogic state. And then it, it took like a choir of angels to pull me out of that sort of a t being attacked by whatever energy that was. And it was, uh, you know, it's hard to describe such things because they're extremely subjective. But when the psychic attack was happening after using that practice, uh, this mind just started repeating Gloria and Excelsius Dio, Gloria and Excelsius Dio, and then the mind stopped saying it. And then I heard a, a, what sounded like a hundred angels singing Gloria and Excelsius Dio. And then whatever that dark energy was, went away and then I woke up, like sat up in my room and was just like, holy shit, like what the hell just happened? And it was like, start clear what it all was and what triggered it. But anyways, it was worth sharing because it's kind of confirmation that this Zen teaching of Huang Po, eliminating all conceptual thought is a very straight and narrow pathway. So anyways, thanks for listening guys. Um, yeah, I look forward to doing another video hopefully soon. All right, take care.